I bet that if I told you that I have three pairs of shoes, you wouldn't lift an eyebrow. You would just say, what an uninteresting fact of life. Why are you telling me this? Well, the thing is that we all have, or many of us, are so lucky to have many shoes. You can see here I have my slippers and I have my trusty walking shoes and I have my running shoes. And all of these are good at different purposes. So as the British say, horses for courses. So this one for running, this one for walking, and this one for being at home and relaxing, right? So why is it that when I replace these three shoes with cameras, all of a sudden it's a whole different story? But that actually is the case when I replace the shoes with three excellent cameras, all from Nikon here. And uh, all of a sudden I start to get question, why do we have that many cameras? Why do we have three cameras? Well, actually I don't, I have seven cameras and it's not to brag, it's just to say that different cameras are good at different things. So if we start out with the D750 here to the right, this is my trusty camera when I have to do product shoots or I have to do flash photography. If I move on to the D700, probably the one I use the least today, but that's a more artistic camera. It uh, produces excellent image quality, and especially, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, I think the black and white images that comes out of this camera are like nothing I've seen before. They find the colors to be a little bit pale, but the camera itself is the image quality is really, really good. And then we have the Nikon D4, a camera, the only one that is professional level here. It is built for speed, but I actually don't use it for speed. I use it for landscape and nature. And it is because the colors that the Nikon D4 has are absolutely out of this world, if you ask me. The D700 has more pale colors, as far as I can tell. I know colors are very subjective, so take this with a big reservation, but the D700's colors are not as saturated as it is on the D4. And for my personal preference and taste, the colors that come out of the D4 are absolutely stellar. Also, the D4 is really, really solid built. It has a built-in battery grip, you can see. The camera is comes like one big chunk and it is really, really a massive uh, yeah, camera to hold. It weighs a lot, but it also is a camera I'm very, very comfortable bringing to the beach uh, where it is a very brutal environment with salt water, salt in the air, sand, stone and so on. This camera is really built for that purpose and that's why I'm very uh, comfortable bringing it to the beach. The D700, I think, also could could uh, you know live well on a beach, whereas the D750, I would never bring that to the beach. It is a much more, um, what should I say? It's it's it feels like it's more, I mean, relative to the D4. So so take that uh, as a reservation, but it is a much more uh, fragile. is maybe in a strong word, but it is a camera that is not built as solid as, as the D4 is. But I will say again, most cameras are not built as solid as the D4. This one, however, is super easy to work with. And that's why I prefer it for product shoots, where I have to control the flash. And also if I have to use live view, it's the D750 I use. Some will say that the, the colors and the things that come out of the, the D750 are not exactly sexy or special in any way, and I would agree, but it is really, really easy to work with. It's really easy to get the images exactly the way that you want them, and that's why product shoots, where I, I really want the images to come out exactly as I want it to. I don't want to redo, I don't want to, you know, re yeah, basically redo my work. The D750 is simply so trustworthy and predictable and that's why i love it for for especially product shoots but also for for flower photography you can see here i have the 
Tokina 100 millimeter lens sitting on on uh, that camera, and I think also that has to do with the weight of it. Often when I do flower photography, I have to hold the camera still for very long, and uh, then it's a good thing that uh, it is not too heavy. I'm I'm not a big fan of tripods, I must admit. The D700, uh, I would say it has a big downside in terms of its you can say user interface. I find the live view to be quirky. I really miss the ability to shift between auto ISO switch that uh, on and off. And and in general, I you know you can of course learn these things and work around them. But relative to the D750, I would say I I really understand why the D750 is the wedding photographer's preferred workhorse or was a few years back because it is so easy to to work with. The artistic D700 is a little bit more complicated, but we're not talking big differences. It's just those small differences that, you know, makes me grab the D750 for, for, the, for the purpose I just explained. And then we have the D4. I, I, I know it's built for speed and I probably need to investigate more how it performs when you have to shoot birds in flight, where I actually switched to the Z50 uh, because I get the extra reach. But I need to try the D4 a bit more, but I would say just as a camera uh, doing landscape photography and intentional camera movement, you can see here I have a, a heavy ND filter here in front of the lens. The D4 is my uh, workhorse and it, it really performs and does everything and it's so solid built that it's almost crazy. So if you're in the market for a, a camera that is really really solid build and I think this one was six thousand dollars when it was brand new I would say the the d4 if you can carry it um, is probably one of the most solid built uh, cameras you can get today on the used market uh, the d700 is also solid built but not as solid as the d4 but definitely also can take a lot of beating whereas I would be a little bit more cautious with the D750, although it also is, it is a solid camera, but it's just when you, when you compare it to, to, to these two, um, you know, brick houses, then uh, of course, anyone has a difficulty uh, <laughs> living up to that uh, high standard, right? The differences I've explained between these three cameras are what I would call marginal, um, in the sense that you could, of course, live with just one of these three cameras. You could probably do product shoots on the D4. Uh, I would say, though, that the D700, I have problems controlling uh, my Godox flashes uh, with the D700. And maybe it's just a, a thing with me, but I, when I use the remote trigger that you see here sitting on top of the D750, I cannot get that to work with the D700. But otherwise, I would say you could probably do most of the shooting that I, guide, that I do uh, with any of the, these three cameras. So please see the differences I've highlighted here uh, in that light. Just like you could probably with a pair of sneakers, you can use those both for, for running and for walking and for uh, being at home. So of course you can find one size fits all, but it's just if you have the option here, I find that uh, the Cameras are good at different things, and that's why I, I cling on to them. That's it. I hope this was useful. I hope this was a compare across the cameras rather than the individual cameras. If you have any questions to these three wonderful cameras, please don't hesitate to uh, drop a comment. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.